very soon, talking about uh, the Arches Radio 4, we've got uh, Anna Hill in the studio. Yes, who uh, farming today. We're very yeah. lucky that we, we pinch her from the, for the Norfolk patch. You'll hear the odd report from her on uh, on our breakfast. The Norfolk patch sounds like something you put on if you're trying to give up Norfolk. <laughs> How would you fancy driving from Braintree to Italy in a Triumph Herald estate? My next guest did just that, and the story of his journey uh, forms the heart of his next show, All Roads Lead to Rome. Chris Dobrovolsky's solo show is on at Norwich Arts Centre as part of the Norfolk and Norwich Festival, and Chris is here in the studio. You may have noticed that Stephen very kindly gave me, you, you, he gave me your name, which you handled, which was Dobrovolsky. lovely. Dobrovolsky. Where does the name come from? I it's Polish. 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 But it, it translates as Wilson. <laughs> I like it. That's that's, that's nice. That's nice. Much better to have Dobrovolsky, I think. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been into into these uh, classic cars, these beautiful things? Uh, well, since I was well, I don't know. I wasn't really into classic cars. I just was into this car, which was the car that was in our family since I was born. The story is, is my when my mum became pregnant with her second child, my dad bought this car brand new. And the car has just stayed in the family ever since. So, so it is part of the family. It is really yeah, is part yeah, of the family yeah. there. So I never went out to find classic cars. The car was here so long it became classic. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a worry, isn't it? Yeah. You know, Thordis has got an old car. It's thatched. Leaded yeah. windows. Everything. But isn't it funny? I mean, how, some people do have that connection, that affinity with uh, with things like cars. They Because they, cars have a soul, especially the older ones. Yeah, what I, what I always say is it's a kind of like a... In a way, it's sort of a paradoxical relationship I have with the car. Because when you have something a long time, you get attached to it. It's harder to get rid of. You keep it longer, and you become more attached, and you keep it longer. And hence, you end up with a car 46 years. You're agreeing with that? Uh, oh, absolutely. There's absolutely no chance that my little car would would do anything. I do sometimes wonder what would happen if I had a job that saw me having to commute miles and miles in it, uh, and I probably would have to to maybe get something that was just a little runaround. Because, I mean, as much as I love them, I mean, you've done this epic journey, and my other half drove to Mongolia in a Morris Minor. So I, I know it can be done, but I still think I, for, for the long journey, I might prefer something more modern, and I know that's terrible blasphemy, but... Uh... Yeah, my girlfriend's the same. She would have preferred something far more modern. She came with me. She can speak Italian, and... Um... I'd like to say never a cross word was spoken in <laughs> 3,000 miles, but that would be lying. <laughs> any brought about by the uh, mode of transport? Sorry? Any any of those crosswords brought about by the fact that you oh, were travelling? most of them, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think one of the problems was we had a leak in the petrol tank, uh, not underneath, but on the top, so the fumes were escaping into the car. And um, Priscilla, my girlfriend, is a very short-tempered smoker, chain smoker. Oh, no, no, <laughs> right, OK, right. So, so you couldn't upset her because she'd just light up? This, 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 stop yeah. the car. Stop yeah. the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, I don't, don't want to put my foot in it here, but she did learn, she learned, she, she learned to drive in Sao Paulo. So whenever it got to something complicated like Rome or Bologna, it was like, you're driving here. <laughs> yeah, you've got to have that, that's a confidence. And, and not, when I say aggression, I mean uh, positive yeah. aggression. You, you, She's yeah. got the aggression. Yeah. <laughs> Is um, she listening out of interest? <laughs> you're painting quite a picture. <laughs> you see, that saves me asking you, you if, if you, because this was going to be so difficult to ask, whether you just took her on the journey because of her ability to speak Italian. But now I know she can negotiate different, difficult uh, road systems. Multi-skilled. Don't they? Multi-skilled. But there you are. We can move on. But did she like driving your trial of Herald Estate? Uh, yeah, she did, actually, in the end. It was quite a novelty for her. But, um, yeah, I mean, she probably, yeah, she probably liked it for the first day. <laughs> Well, go on, talk us through its quirks, because some of us are quirks. well acquainted okay, with the one that I quirks. talk about in the show is the fact that uh, the, our pet dog was tied to the handle when we went on a picnic once in the early 70s and saw another dog run after it, rip the door handle off the car. So to this day, if you want to shut the car, you have to slam it extra specially hard. Otherwise, it has this horrible tendency to fly open again when you go around a sharp corner. <laughs> Right. What Not good in the middle of Rome. What colour is the car, by the way? It's called... I know this because I used to buy those little tins in the 70s with the name of Gun the Metal Blue. Is the oh, car. yeah, I can see it now. Uh, and has it got the, the walnut dashboard? Or uh, I don't think it's walnut, but yes, a lovely wooden dashboard. Mm -hmm. yeah. Veneered. Oh, it's see? a quality little, unlike um, anything you see today. And little the, stoppers are on and off. They look like, it looks like a church organ. You know yeah. those little stoppers yeah. you pull out? Like little, little choke. So little choke little yeah. Yeah. when it comes to triumphs, because I know in my Morris Minor you push a little button for water and, yeah. uh, and you flick switches for lights. Uh, little, and you no, it's not have... a push button. It's actually a plunger on my car. <laughs> plunger. <Yeah. laughs> 
What did your dad used to say was going on there? Oh, uh, well, with, with the, when you press the button, there were the, the wee wee boys. There were some tiny little <laughs> boys who used to used to lay down under the bonnet. And when you press the button, they used to wee up the windscreen. And I said, oh, really, Dad? He said, oh, come on, Stephen, you're 28. <laughs> Surely don't believe that now. Now, this, this Triumph Herald estate, you, you drove it from Braintree to Italy. It's not the most usual route. So um, what, what was the inspiration behind that journey? OK, two things. First of all, I didn't realise until quite late on that the car was designed in Italy. Well, it was like a quintessentially English car. We were seeing a truck. Of course, yes. But it's actually designed by an Italian. And a lot of uh, the cars in the 60s were made designed by Italians. Um, and this was a guy called Giovanni Michelotti in Turin. Italy. So I said earlier the car's got a lot to do with my conception and that my dad bought it when my mum was pregnant with me. I thought it'd be nice to take it to where the car was conceived. So I wow. <clears throat> turned up on this turned up on this guy's doorstep. So he's the guy who designed it, Giovanni, he died sometime in the late seventies or early eighties. But his son still runs this company, so we just knocked on his door. Like a really nice stalker. <laughs> <laughs> What did he say? What was his reaction? Come when he in it? for coffee. He was such a lovely guy, really nice. Mm. So it pays to be a nice stalker sometimes. Um, and then he took me out to the car. Like, things if you see on an old tribe herald, you've got these catchers. And um, he actually took me out to my own car that I'd known for 40 years and pointed out this M on the bonnet catch that I hadn't noticed He's before. Known, but he and that, he, he had to explain to me that was for oh, his name. Yeah, it was a nice wow. moment. But a little bit embarrassing. But, bear, <laughs> but bearing in mind that cars of that uh, that vintage and that particular part of the world, Italy, around the Côte d'Azur and, and all along uh, the, 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 the southern coast of France, there was something very special in that, in that point in history. That was very chic. That was the place to be. And you see it if you look back in all the old movies with the old films. Yeah. Cars like that. It was yeah. something very special. Yeah. About that period of time. That yeah. place. We, we missed out on the coke because we went through a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> I know the tunnel. <laughs> I, know, I know the tunnel. <laughs> I stopped a, a lorry driver stopped me in a, in a service. I had a chat with a lorry driver at a service station, and he was explaining. I think you should take this tunnel because it's not as steep as all the others. <laughs> Yeah, I can see people when I go through Marisold in Norwich, people who get stuck behind me in my Morris Mine are going like, oh, no, hills, <laughs> hills and yes, a car yes. from 1970. It's not a good combination. But there, there was a lovely, I sort of the car I saw on the A11 once, I can't, I can't remember what it was, it was or something like that. And they'd taken the time and trouble to actually paint, hand paint a little notice on them to stick on the back of the car, apologising for the delay. <laughs> <laughs> well, so what would you get out of your, uh, your car then? Are, are you, when you've got an open road, are you okay speed wise? Oh, yeah, I could yeah. do 55. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah beyond 55, they start to rattle quite a lot. Oh, that, that is rattling at 55. <laughs> So naught to 55 in three quarters of an hour. I was going to tell you about the rest of the journey, wasn't I? Please. Just remember, yeah, the rest of the journey is uh, after Turin. Um, the other part of the story is that my dad was in Italy as well. So he was there in the war, 1945, uh, part of the Free Polish Army. So there's this whole series of events where my dad went to during the war, and we followed his steps. So that's Monte Cassino, Bologna, and all those places. So in a sense, what we've got is uh, this car and all its family photographs, all that lovely little cosy world, and we take it to all these places where my dad had all these horrific experiences in World War Two. How does that make you feel? Now you've, now you've done all this research and uh, you've got this wonderful journey and this beautiful car. How, how does that make you feel? Does it sort of complete you as a human being, do you think? Does it, has it really moved you on or made you want to go and discover more? I, I'd have reached the point where I'm sort of not sure what I want to do next because it was something I wanted to do for a long time. Um, but, uh, I don't yeah, it's, it's, well, it's anything like that. You do find a I think what it was was this kind of like a, the car became like a stepping stone through history. You kind of like uh, the car was all part of this um, consumer culture that we live in today, um, and then it takes you back to the war where where you were, where where that began. So you kind of like it brings the war closer to home. This is the sort of thing you know when you're sitting on the couch and you put the telly on. You go to like BBC Four. That's exactly the sort of hour-long documentary I'd like to sit and watch. That's right. That was my show. It's as good as Radio sit. Four. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, BBC Four TV. You know when you sit down, you make a great TV documentary following you filming you. You're familiar with when you. I wish if, if I had the, if I had the power nearby, you'd be first in the list. First. What about me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Second in the list, sorry. <laughs> uh, Chris, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, good uh, thank uh, you for having me. It's on at the Norwich Arts Centre tonight. Quite late. Very late. It's for people How are you going to stay awake? Night hawks. Oh, coffee. <laughs> We'll get you another one before Thank you, you go. Thank you very much. I can imagine if I, do, if, I, if I am in a position ever to, to sort out those TV deals, as I say, I'll let you know. So you're a bit late to the office, and you say, yes, we're going to stop behind this woman in a Morris Thousand. But uh, for the time being, thank you very much. Thank you.